welcome to my channel. So it feels like absolutely ages since the last time I did a video um, and I think it is absolutely ages, <laughs> probably about three or four months. So I am a week after my second surgery so I thought I would pop on and do a quick video just about where I am with my treatment, um, what's going on with my surgeries, how I'm getting on. So for anyone that doesn't know my story, my name's Nikki. So I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer in August 2017 when I was 34. I went on to have six rounds of chemo, three of FEC and three of doxytaxel. So I've completed my chemotherapy in January 2018, January of this year. I also found out that I have the BRCA1 genetic mutation. So that put me at a much higher risk of getting another primary breast cancer um, and also puts me at risk of ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer and skin cancer. Oh the joys. So because of that I opted to have a double mastectomy and reconstruction. So I had the first part of my surgery in March 2018. Um, my surgery I had a direct to implant nipple sparing, skin sparing, double mastectomy with immediate reconstruction. So what they did was my surgeon very cleverly cut under each boob, um, scooped out all my breast tissue and then just basically put in an implant and stitched me up. So I had uh, polyurethane round implants over the muscle um, they are 600 cc which is quite big because it was a double mastectomy that's why I had 600 cc so that was in March um, it is December 2018 now I have just had the second part of my reconstruction so my surgeon gave me time to heal um, I was supposed to have this surgery in August 2018 and it got cancelled at the last minute, which was annoying. Well, not the last minute, two days beforehand. Um, and I've been waiting ever since to get it done. So I got a phone call two weeks ago uh, just saying, do you want to come in for surgery in two weeks? So I said yes. Well, so the surgery that I was having or have had is what's called lipo modeling. So lipo modeling is where they take fat from your body um, and they layer it over the implants. Uh, so the reason I was having this surgery is because uh, when they put the implants in, because they are over the sort of combination of things really, because I'm so skinny up top, I'm sort of a size eight really. Um, because I have no fat under my skin, because they have round implants, because they're polyurethane implants, they're a lot thicker, the crust of them's a lot harder than sort of um, silicone ones. So all of these meant that you could see, I will put a picture up, that you could see where the implant was under the skin. So it was a very definite, especially on the right hand side, which was my cancer side, there was a very definite ridge where the implant joined my rib cage. Um, and also I had quite bad rippling, very quite noticeable rippling, especially on my right hand side and the left hand side, sort of the, the um, outer side. So my surgeon said, well, I can harvest some fat from parts of your body and we will use those to fill that in. So that's what he did. I had it done last Tuesday. So it was a week ago today. Um, he took fat from my thighs um, my inner thighs, my outer thighs. He then injected it, so they they harvest it, they filter it. I don't really know. Um, and then they re-inject it. They re-inject the pure fat. So they re-injected. They had I think about five different entry sites. So they went um, one either side of the nipple to go upwards, and then underneath my bust as well. Um, I've got some entry holes where they sort of inject into the cleavage. So that went really well. Uh, it was done under general anaesthetic 
it was a three hour operation so it was a bit longer than they expected and it went really well really really well I was actually uh, pleasantly surprised I think my surgeon was pleasantly surprised as well about the results so um, before the ridge was very noticeable and you can't see it now so I've got a proper cleavage now which is good um, the rippling has gone I know I've got a lot of swelling um, still to go down a lot of bruising but you can definitely tell there's a massive difference with the rippling you can't there's no ripples at all I was completely unprepared for the level of discomfort that I had been in the last week I would probably say that this surgery has been harder than my double mastectomy and reconstruction it's this one it's over a much larger surface area so as you probably see with my bruising <laughs> it goes from my knees right up to my waist and that is it looks like someone's run over me I literally look like I've been hit by a car and it is over a huge expanse of my body I've then also got a lot of bruising in my bust which doesn't hurt so much because I've I have no nerve endings in my bust anymore um, so it's only really the bruising that's coming outwards sort of beyond where my nerve damage is um, so it's quite manageable pain so you can see already there's a pretty vast difference in my cleavage I had entry points on each nipple so you can see there's bandages covering those we've also got three entry points underneath each boob so we've got bandages covering those hopefully the bruising will go down in the next few days not too bad but my fat donor sites it's a different ball game so we've got an entry point at the top of each inner thigh and you can see the bruising that's come from that it's pretty painful pretty swollen we've also got on the outer thigh we've got some pretty bad bruising where they've gone backwards down the backs of my thighs it is pretty painful hoping the swelling goes down soon It has made sleeping really difficult. I haven't been able to move around. Today and yesterday were really the first days that I could walk around. So, you know, I was off my feet completely for a good five days. Um, and I wasn't at all prepared for that. I thought I would sail through this and it has been a little bit of a struggle. Um, I went to see my surgeon yesterday just because I was having some pain. Uh, I was supposed to see him on Friday. And he was very, very pleased with the results, um, so much so that he wants to take some photos, which sounds a bit dodgy. <laughs> um, but he's going to take some photos for um, medical journals. Um, the problem with fat grafting is that your body tends to reabsorb some of it. So he said that I could potentially reabsorb up to 30%. So they took... They took enough to inject 100 mils on each side of fat and they've also frozen 100 mil. So the problem was, because I'm not very fat, <laughs> he didn't have a lot of fat to harvest. So the idea with this surgery is really that you have the big surgery. So it's a two part surgery. So you have the liposuction where they take the fat from your body. They then filter that. Um, so that part of the surgery, you may, you should only have that part, that liposuction part, once. So they then filter the fat um, and they can send some off to be frozen. So the second part of the surgery is then that they inject the fat to the places that it's needed. So the problem is, I didn't have enough fat for them to harvest enough for my next surgery. Which is a pain. So I was quite looking forward to the next surgery being an easier surgery and me not having to have the liposuction. So it was only when I went to my surgeon yesterday and he said we could only harvest 100 mil um, to be used in your next surgery, um, which means that once it's defrosted, only 60 mils is viable and then split between each boob, that's <laughs> 30 mils per boob, and they like to inject in 100 mils. So he needs quite a bit more. So that was a bit, oh, blah. 
um, a bit of a downer because I have to have the liposuction again next time. Um, but hey ho. So he has recommended that I have this second, my no, my second fat transfer, my third surgery, um, in about four months' time. So we're looking at April time, and it will be a complete repeat of this surgery. So I have been signed off for four weeks, um, and initially when they signed me off for four weeks, I thought I'll be back within one, maybe two. Uh, but the way I've been feeling, I really think that I will at least be off for three, if not four weeks. Um, just the amount of fatigue. Uh, I'm really hungry. I'm really, really sore. I'm not sleeping well because every time you turn, it is like the biggest, well it is, it's the biggest bruise I've ever had in my life. In a the other thing that I've had to do is I've had to buy some Spanx. So if anybody that doesn't know what Spanx are, they're kind of shapewear. Um, and I had to buy the ones that go from your knee right up to your waist. And I have to wear those 24 hours a day, seven days a week for six weeks. Um, so that's been... Uh, that's been tricky in fact pulling them up is probably the most traumatic part of the experience once they're up and they're on they're okay but I really have to psych myself up to go to the toilet <laughs> um they do that I pull them up and it knocks me sick I think the first day I did it I almost passed out and I'm not a drama queen uh, you know I've been I've been through some really horrible stuff in the last 18 months but I seriously almost passed out when I pulled them up the first day. Oh, God, it was horrible. But it has got easier with every day. Um, so, going forward, I'm kind of coming to the end now of my reconstruction. I'm glad the end is in sight. You can see the finishing line now. Um, and I am, I'm happy with my boobs now. I probably, I will have the next surgery. Um, Health wise, I'm really good. I had a scare a few weeks ago where I have had rib pain for months now, months and months and months and months. Um, but they sent me for an emergency chest x-ray and that uh, just showed nothing apparently. So I have an appointment with my oncologist next month, uh, which will be my six months, yeah, my year checkup since chemo. Bit of a neck, it's been a year. Um, so, hair wise, I've got actual hair and it's pretty long. <laughs> um, still can't wait for it to, it's in that awkward in between phase where it's not a pixie cut, but it's not quite a bob yet. So, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, work wise, back at work full time, apart from when I'm off for surgery. <laughs> um, Otherwise, I'm actually dealing really well. I'm feeling the best that I have done since cancer came into my life. Um, exercising a lot, which has really helped with my acceptance of my body um, and sort of gaining control again. That was my big thing. Uh, I very much felt out of control for so many months. So many, so many, so many months. And that was the best thing I could do, was get back to the gym, get back to exercising, get back to lifting ridiculously heavy weights, even though I probably shouldn't have done having had breast reconstruction, but... Um, and I'm really, really happy with where my life is. Uh, planning some holidays next year, um, finally, which is another reason why I don't want my third surgery until next winter. <laughs> um, and just loving life. So if you have any questions, I hope I've clarified most things about the fat transfer aspect of breast reconstruction. Um, if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below. I do try and answer as much as I can. And thank you. If you've liked this video, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel and I will try and do another video soon.